Hello everybody, this is Dale again and this is going to be my third video blog. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about the classical era and the rise of the middle class. Um, now the classical era uh, came right after the Baroque era and um, it really goes hand in hand with, with the prominent rise of the middle class. Um, this is because uh, with the rise of the middle class people found themselves um, with a steady income of money and they didn't have to work in the fields of the time. So, so leisure time was really developed during this period and what better way to spend your time than listening to great music during this time uh, there's really like a cyclic effect that was going on um, people had more money and had more time to spend doing other stuff than working so what they would do is they they would they wanted to listen to these great musics the middle class became more educated in music, what music was like, and they, they had it became an actual taste in music. They didn't just listen to what they wanted, anything that was put out. Um, so there was a great demand for new, innovative music. They didn't want to listen to the same thing every time. They wanted new music almost every time they listened to to it. And so with any supply and demand, there's there's a great supply or there's a great demand for music, uh, new music, innovative music, different types of music. And so there became um, a huge supply for this music and during this time great composers that we all know and have all heard of Beethoven, Mozart, Chopin, um, Hayden, they were all alive and very active during this time. Um, Mozart can easily easily be considered one of the greatest composers of all time. Hands down he was child prodigy composing music at the age of five. He uh, performed his first opera at the age of like 13 I think. Um, so he is a great example, um, a great person to look at uh, with a connection of classical music and the middle class. Uh, one thing that I think is is amazing is that Mozart is definitely a, a phenomenal composer and created some, some of the world's most beautiful music. And the beauty of it is that the middle class, not just the the aristocrats or the, the upper class or the royalty, the middle class could hear this music and could enjoy this music on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, not only with, with the middle class, but the Industrial Revolution and the widespread of the printing press. Um, these great composers' music was able to be printed and dispersed all over the place. So even amateur, um, amateur composers or amateur artists could play this music. And so this, this really is a really great effect going on at this time. This, the supply and demand again. Um, it was it was good for everybody. It was a win-win situation. Um, one type of music that I would like to talk about is the sonata, and Mozart did write a lot of sonatas. Uh, sonatas um, usually contain three movements: um, an exposition, uh, development, and the uh, uh, recapitulation. And um, Sonatas also contain usually only two instruments, which is really, really important because normally when people think of classical music, they think of the huge symphonies, um, the you know many, many people, you know the composer in the middle doing his doing his thing, and this is not a sonata. Sonatas were only two instruments, two people, and it was highly, highly accessible to ordinary, everyday people. And not only that, um, these great um, Composers uh, Beethoven, Mozart did write a lot of sonatas, and so almost everybody got to have a piece of this awesome music. Um, the sonata that I have today uh, is Mozart's uh, Violin Sonata Number no. 18 in G Major, uh, Kreisel 301, and he wrote this sonata in 1778. And during this time, he was on a tour from Mannheim to Paris, and with his mother, and they stopped in Mannheim for five months. And this is when Mozart wrote this sonata, and I'm sure he wrote other ones during this time, but I particularly like this one. Um, it's the sonata is very interesting because it does not contain three movements; it contains two movements, an allegro con spirito and an allegro. And there isn't the slower um, development movement in the middle like in a normal sonata. Uh, the first part of the sonata, the allegro con spirito, is very lively and had lots and lots of spirit in, in it, which you know, hence the conspirito. And um, then there's a second part, which is an allegro, which which is very which is very timely, has a has a definite um, has a definite tempo in it. 
And when I listened to this one, I, I immediately thought of um, just a bunch of people just gathered around in a lounge listening to someone playing this movie or gathered around in a small apartment or even outside in a gazebo type thing. And it, it's really something that you can just sit back and relax and listen to. And this, when I, when I listened to it, it's, I mean, it just struck me. This is something that, that normal, everyday middle class people could listen to and enjoy. Um, the piece that I have for you here uh, was performed by um, Helen Martinson on the violin and Sally Pincus on the piano, and was performed at WGBH's Fraser Performing Performance Studio. Um, it's about 13 minutes long. Uh, the first, the first, um, the first movement is about seven or eight minutes long. The second movement is about five minutes long, and there's a distinct separation between them too. So you can easily hear the conspirato and the allegro and the difference between it. Um, so sit back and relax, uh, turn the lights off and close your eyes and just listen to this music and it's really something wonderful and I hope you all enjoy it. Thank you for listening to my video blog and I'll see you guys next time.